हरिओम we have completed 16 chapters of bhagavad gita and now only two chapters are remaining so the main uh, teaching of bhagavad gita is already uh, completed in this many chapters now in this 17th chapter bhagwan gives some important uh, guidance for our day to day sadhana the main purpose of this uh, bhagavad gita is to reveal to us our own identity therefore the bhagavad gita begins with the word dharma concludes with the word mama so mama dharma my dharma my nature who am i that is revealed in bhagavad gita which is the essence of all the upanishads so we what we know about ourself is not the real knowledge it's quite frightening but we move around in this world without knowing who we are whatever we know about our self keeps on changing as the body changes as the mind changes as our understanding intellect changes our understanding of who we are also keeps changing but really speaking i am not a changing phenomena i am someone who is more eternal who is eternal so i have not recognize i don't recognize my own self and this non recognition of the self creates the illusion of this uh, life with all its ups and downs so the the scriptures tell us that if you want to become free of this illusion then you have to recognize yourself as you are but if you want to continue with the illusion then you are welcome but it is not very pleasant all the time sometimes we get joy in this world and sometimes sorrow so it is not uh, all uh, all good so after going through various stages in life after being through different types of uh, forms of life animal birds plant finally we get this human birth and in human birth we have the capacity to think and we have the capacity to ask question animals don't have this capacity or even if they ask nobody understand what they are saying a dog may ask where is my food but uh, fundamental questions of life who am i what is this world that is asked those questions are asked by human beings only human beings want to know the essence of their own being whether we pursue in the field of science or in spirituality the question is same that who are we what are we made up of what is this world what is life what is death these questions are there which keeps bothering a thinking person non thinking person are busy with their mobiles but a thinking person is uh, bothered by this question ki who am i what is this world who is god and uh, we try to find answers to them but we don't get them in the world outside but luckily 
these questions are not unanswered. There are answers to those questions. And those answers are given by those realized masters who have finally gained that state of enlightenment, who have gained that understanding or realization of the ultimate truth. And these answers are revealed in our scriptures like the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita. So, one who is deeply interested to understand, know about the truth, should follow this scripture, should follow Bhagavad Gita, and it will guide us to our ultimate destination. Though a lot of stanzas and a lot of things are said in Bhagavad Gita, but briefly Bhagavan talks about recognizing ourselves in the deep state of meditation. Dhyana vastita tad gatena manasa pashanti yam yoginaha. I might have said it many times, but again I will say it. Yeah. When a mind becomes or mind goes in the state of meditation, when the mind becomes silent, not stunned, not uh, deluded, but when the mind becomes silent, see, it's not very easy to silence the mind. Normally it is never silent actually. But when the mind becomes silent, then in the state of the silence of the mind, we come to recognize ourselves as we are. This is the only requirement. Silence the mind. Not, not make the mind dull or take it into sleep, but when we are awake, alert, aware, the mind is silent. So when the mind is silent, the illusions do not disturb and in that state, one come to recognize ourselves as we are. We gain an immediate experience of our own self. So dhyana is the is the uh, is what is required. But in order to silence the mind, we need lot of preparation. Mind can become silent when there is proper understanding. Mind can become silent when there is proper uh, emotions. Mind becomes silent with proper attitude. Otherwise mind never becomes silent. Mind doesn't listen to us. We keep saying that it is my mind, but it hardly listens to us. It's like some people have their pet and all, they don't listen to them. Tiger, keep quiet. And tiger makes big noise. Tiger means the little baby dog. <laughs> Sometimes the names are frightening, but when you look at them, they are not so frightening. But they make a lot of noise. So it appears as though he is the master and the dog is the slave or something, but he doesn't listen. Similarly, our mind doesn't listen to us. We tell the mind to keep quiet, it doesn't keep quiet. We tell the mind to think about this, it doesn't think about that. We tell the mind don't go there, it goes there. We read in the books, we should bring the mind in the present moment. Very good, you read. Then we tell the mind, okay mind, please come in the present moment. Mind say, mind doesn't listen. Mind say, you to keep reading, I will go in the past. past I want to again go through it. I want to again enjoy what I had enjoyed first. Or the mind goes into future. So mind doesn't listen. So what is the method? The method to silence the mind is knowledge, is love, and his proper attitude. Proper attitude we can develop in our action. That's called karma yoga. Then we develop 
intense love for that supreme reality that is bhakti and then we gain the understanding of what is that supreme reality with the help of the scriptures that is knowledge or wisdom so when we go through all this process which is explained in detail in bhagavad gita karma yog bhakti jnana then the mind start becoming more and more calm and peaceful right attitude and immediately lot of disturbance of the mind goes away attitude towards our self attitude towards our world attitude towards our actions attitude towards the results of action attitude towards god attitude towards the whatever circumstances in which we are when we correct our attitude while living while working in this world when we correct when we improve when we make our attitude more and more sublime that is called karma yoga karma yoga is nothing but fine tuning our attitude towards our self our action our life so that immediately makes the mind free from lot of its disturbances if i am disturbed then somewhere there is something wrong with my attitude ne ultimate attitude is be attitude that is just to be but other attitude attitude of seva of surrender of compassion of kindness of non attachment of accepting whatever result comes at prasad this type of attitudes when we have then the mind start becoming more and more calm and peaceful because those who have given us this path they understand the nature of the mind and how it can be controlled how it can be made peaceful so the first step is karma yoga which was explained in detail in the third second third fourth chapters so many chapters bhagwan talked about it so when the mind becomes relatively calm and peaceful then we start uh, thinking and understanding what is my ultimate goal of life and then to develop that love for that goal to develop that love for that supreme reality which can be personified in the form of some devatas or need not be personified can remain avyakta and nirakar without any form and beyond all manifestation to have that love for that supreme is bhakti hmm love for my own supreme self love for my own real nature love for god within me and within every one of us that's called bhakti bhakti is not just uh, singing some songs or bhajans and all but bhakti is to have that love satu asmin parama prema rupa supreme love for god god means our own supreme self is bhakti that bhakti also quietens the mind in a deep way so attitude quietens the mind and this bhakti quietens the mind but still the mind might be little restless in the deep deeper level which can be further quieten through knowledge through wisdom through giving the mind the understanding of who we really are what is the nature of that supreme reality what is my relationship with that what is the nature of this world when we have that understanding the mind becomes very peaceful at a deep level see lot of our agitation is created by delusion confusion not knowing ignorance eh? 
at night suddenly you hear some noise in your room khak khuk 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 this fear like and you wonder then you hear some footsteps coming <laughs> then there is more fear then the footstep enter the kitchen then there is more fear what is he who is he who is what is he cooking then that fellow opens the refrigerator and in the light of the refrigerator you see your younger brother trying to eat something from the refrigerator when you recognize then immediately all fear disappears and you then go to sleep similarly when we have doubts who am i what is life what is death what happens after death oh, what is the reality what is this world when all the doubts get cleared properly doubts don't get cleared properly just by discussing with our uh, friends or something but by taking the help of the scriptures which gives us the proper answers to lot of our questions to all our questions